<laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go with that. There we go with that. And there we go with that. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back live with the Louis B. Free Radio Show, Brain Food from the Heartland. I'm just delighted to have returning to the show, Keith Brewer, Barley Juice. I'm hey. I'm thrilled. How are you, man? Good, Louis. How are you, man? It's been a few it's, years. It has. It has. It's It's been too long. And, you know, the older I get, it's like... Let's do it now. <laughs> I know the faster it all goes. It's just... Don't you think, you know, a younger people, I don't think uh, understand it. And again, this is kind of a, it's not crude, but it was explained to me by someone much older than me years ago who said, Louis, life's like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. Well, obviously, oh, the man. Space, yeah, but that's it, right? Yeah, somebody told me, a mathematician explained this to me when I was very young, that like, you know, it's just because of your continuum, because of the way you measure time. Time, When yeah. you're young, things take, so Christmas takes sure. forever. Yeah. But as you get older, you compare it to the rest of your life, and it's just Christmas, Christmas. Quick, quick. <laughs> and, that's, that's the, and that's the way it is. Uh, I had <laughs> Claudia Hammond on a BBC presenter and author, wrote a book about time, all about time. It was just fascinating to understand some of the the issues with time and how you know yeah. she talked about do you see time like coming at you or do you see you going through time i mean it's just uh, thoughtful it's just it's interesting right. it's, it, yeah interesting so i'm delighted again i'm delighted to have you back You're, oh uh, i'm glad who, to be who here some, who's behind you who's laying down oh i have dogs all around me man oh my I god that's a beautiful a, i'm sorry for this Oh God! This, oh wait! Oh, I got to get a picture. Listeners always hate when uh, I do this, and I'm I'm sorry, folks, but that's oh, Dandelion. Oh, she's Dandelion. nine. She's oh, been around she, for a while. Oh, look at her! Look at you! Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, uh, um, oh, oh, oh God! I didn't get the lick. Oh, I missed that. Uh, How about we'll another lick, lick Dandelion? Oh, wait, 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 and then and then to offset <laughs> that, this is James. James and Dan oh, there's a lot of licks. Yeah, that's a lot of licks, man. Oh, James, God, that's woo. adorable. Oh God, that's. And I don't even get the. I don't even get the worst of it. My oh. wife gets the worst of it. Is that right? Oh, yeah. so. And she's wonderful, also. Oh, thank you for that. Again, this, okay. <laughs> you know, the YouTube video will be up later. The Facebook, etc. I'll post some pictures if they came out. Okay, thanks for that, Keith. Yeah. So let's talk about. You've got a new album out that I absolutely love. I love barley juice. I love the music. Let's go way back and tell us about yourself and music for you. Barley Juice started 23 years ago, roughly, uh, with me and, and another fellow, uh, Swanee, was my partner. And we uh, started playing in a pipe band together, bagpipe band together, and then uh, eventually realized that we could do this more than St. Patty's Day every year. And so it became a thing where we were started searching for festivals and things like that. And it's taken us all over the country and into UK. And we have got, uh, so I think people, you know, I don't even know this, Louis. <laughs> people have been telling me this is our eighth album, eighth studio album. I thought it was the seventh. Like we talked about with time, continuum, <laughs> things are just getting away from me. So it's either my seventh or eighth studio album, and I'm happy uh, to have produced it because um, I started it before COVID. And as you know, wow. everybody's yeah. plans changed when sure. that happened. Everything yeah. changed. Everything everything changed for for all of us. The um, uh, I just thought of a couple of pictures of a dog in the studio. I'm going to have to send you later. See, there's no filter between my brain and my mouth. I'm sorry, but there's a, I had a dog in the studio that I've got. You see my my havoc here, my chaos. The one book that he pulled out, there's tons of books on the floor. It's called Dog Winks. It's about, ah. and he chewed it up. As you can see, I'm gonna, I'll send you a picture later. For you, for music, how did you initially, tell me, take me way back in music for you. Three barley juice. Well, you know, I was just, it's funny because I was just thinking, um, I'm planning a, a UK tour, which we can talk about at any time, but um, that will start my, my story because Barley Juice has taken a number of people over to Ireland uh, and I decided to do something different and take people to the UK and explore Brit rock history and end up in Liverpool and 
And I thought to myself, you know, if it hadn't been for me discovering Brit rock, I probably wouldn't have ever found uh, Irish music and and turn, you know, what we do into into Irish rock. So it's it's kind of it was kind of like that progression. Like I really got interested in the British invasion, and I was at the right age when the Beatles and the Stones and the Kinks and the Who and all those guys yeah. came. Over. And uh, from there, um, just wanted to be nothing but a musician. And um, so it goes all the way back. And I had a, I don't know how deep you want me to go. I had a couple oh, of please. a couple of other bands that recorded some things and. Uh, the first band I ever recorded with was a band called The Ravens in the 80s. And we were lucky enough to have, we were discovered because we had a song on uh, the soundtrack of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which was a big cult movie. Uh, wow, I remember. Yeah, I was called uh, Raised on the Radio. And that was The Ravens. And that was my first big experience with... Um, touring and 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 uh doing interviews like this and all that good stuff that we you know was really into it before the and and as things progress you said the, the irish influence if you will can you tell me a little bit about being in the uk and what that was like well it, it's funny because it started i mean i, mean, I fell in love with it, 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 it eventually fell in love with the irish lyrics and their witticisms and the way they laughed at themselves and everything about their culture just appealed to me but it started in scotland when i was in a band called company of wolves and we were sent to scotland to record our first video for our first single um maybe because of help was cheaper there i don't know why they sent us there but it was kind of exotic at the time i felt like duran duran man we're going all over the world and anyway started in scotland and just uh had to stay in this little town called Lus, um outside of where we shot the uh the video and i got to experience you know the local culture and then i got to experience the pipes I fell in love with the pipes oh. So when I came home after that experience, within a year, I just found somebody to teach the pipes and and got involved in all all things Celtic here in America because we we tend to to combine Irish and Scottish and Welsh and things here. Like we as Americans, if we are Celtic Americans, we a lot of us don't know the difference. Um, so you get this, you get to hear it all. You get to see it all, you know. So in that way, it just it 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 turned into this thing with the pipe band, uh, which was we were playing the great Highland pipes, you know, all everything Scottish, and uh, somehow within that, here in America, especially, there's a lot of Irish influence and there's a lot of Irish re relation with that. And my dogs are playing recklessly behind me right now. No, they pardon. got really excited because they know you're a fan. <laughs> they know I'm a huge fan. That's cool with it's cool with me. It, unless it's bothering you, it's 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 absolutely cool with me. Uh, you said that about the Scottish and the Scottish influence. Um, yeah, it started with Scotland and it ended up in Ireland. I think uh, the Scottish, if I can put it in a neg in in a nutshell, the, the Scottish write these beautiful, serious songs, and the Irish write these crazy, witty songs about everything yeah, yeah, from yeah. and your husband into the river to drink into you know, and it was just and I got that wonderful. Yeah, I I love that. You know, I've had. Um... A number of times, Alexis Fleming from Scotland, who runs a the Maggie Fleming um, hosp animal hospice. It's a, a hospice for for animals. She's wonderful, and she she taught me the word drukat about being soaked because mm. you know I love being out in the rain. And she teaches me a few Scottish words, and they're just so I'm gonna I don't know how to say it, flavorful. I just I I love mm -hmm. them. Just a little book of Scottish in, uh, insults, <laughs> which I'm not. Oh gonna, yeah. You know. And while we're saying this, oh God, what's there? There's a great Scottish. See, I'm all over the place, Keith. Forgive me. The the uh, Scottish show. I don't a series, and it's uh, oh God, not growing up being there. No, I'll th I'll think of it. It is absolutely. It is the I think first series comedy uh 
series where the it what followed all the way through to the end and it was beautiful in the end as tearful as it was is, is beautiful and I'm, I'm still game oh my god i can't believe i remembered it thank you mr memory it's still called game. Still, still game yeah still game if you get a chance i think you'd love it i think you'd love it okay so highly recommend it watch it through because it gets to the, uh, the it, you know how they don't complete usually the series don't complete they kind of leave yeah. you hanging. this one completes and i was grateful for that ladies and gentlemen barley juices keeper on the louis b free radio show brain food from the heartland the new album which you thought was your would you say uh Seven. I thought I thought it could very well be our swan song. Oh, the eighth uh, or the seventh? It's now the Still, eighth. mystery. I'll go and count if you want. But uh, no, 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 no. I've got this <laughs> right here. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about it. You say it began just before the pandemic. You started putting it together. We started putting it together. We had we were due for one. We hadn't done one in a while. And my partner of those twenty years. Uh, Swanee, Keith Swanson, had just decided that he just announced that he was he was tired of touring. He was going to retire. Um, as simple as that. It was no animosity. It was nothing. He just was. He just wanted yeah. wanted to just have another life. So um, so he began the compilation with me, and he plays on it. But by the time the album was done, I had. A, practically a completely different band uh he had left and um the fiddle player of course uh, who was very popular alice she uh needed to continue to make money so she found other bands uh to play with and she was gone and so i got this idea that i would call everybody uh you know i didn't know whether barley juice was going to even be together so i got this idea that i was going to call everybody that had ever been in this band and say, hey, would you you want to come over and make an appearance on this record? And the majority of them did. Uh, so there's a list of people inside. Well, who, who wouldn't well, want to? What's that? The, who wouldn't want to be on the record? Well, I mean, I've got to say, I I would be, and I'm not asking. I can't imagine someone saying, "Well, Keith, uh, I mean, I'd be like, oh my god, you know." <laughs> yeah, but it was also like this, you know, nobody leave your house time of of our yeah. lives too yeah. so there was a lot of like if you don't have a studio in your house you can't send me a track i don't know whether i'm gonna see you um, point. and i love how it says inside the album with juices past and present i love that yes juice juicers past and juicers. present yeah juicer so, that's basically what it was I, was I didn't have the glasses <laughs> strong enough glasses <laughs> Sorry. i was thinking it might be the last record uh, and so I wanted everybody to be on it. And, um, you know, it ended up being quite a project that I got very, very proud of because it was, it was, it was probably more well thought out because of the time uh, than some of the other ones. You know? Again, challenging because of everything with COVID. Like you say, you had to put tracks mm -hmm. together. That, how was that, Keith Brewer, for you? Because you don't, I don't want to say we don't, you, you're not, together together you're doing it people are doing it by zoom or, or whatever and then sending tracks some people maybe were with you maybe not what was that like yeah. it had to be challenging um I, I i assume it's probably similar to what you do in some ways well, it's not, no no you putting an album together is not at all it's thank not you. like what you thank do you. no 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 you're, you do editing and stuff position. over there i assume you edit. i don't edit I, I will tell you something. They when I was uh at a, a station on on Lake Erie out right outside of Cleveland uh, a number of years ago, they wanted to edit some things down to play it later. So from mm -hmm. interviews. And they finally put me out of the editing because it would be like, oh, listen to me there. Listen to me. Listen, listen to my deep breath. You gotta take that out. Oh, what a dumb question. It would be take that out. And they'd end up from 30 minutes or whatever to like three, if I, if it was. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't edit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And that I definitely had the, um, you know, the opportunity to take out anything that I didn't like that I did. So that's the, <laughs> we have that in common, but besides that, I love editing. I love cutting stuff up. I love, um, I've done, I've produced, uh, 
every Barley Juice album, uh, you know, I, I sometimes ask, would ask uh, Swanson to to help me with it, um, listen to this, listen to that. But I've kind of been the one that that said, okay, this one's done, this one's done, send it to it. And then I send it to my friend Cliff, who mixes it and masters it, because I don't want to get involved with the outboard. I like the editing. I see. So, so yeah, that's pretty much what it was. I was sitting there and I was kind of in my, in my, uh, in my glory anyway, just sitting in my studio, just uh, working on these tracks until I felt they were done. Um, and, you know, I got a chance to actually say, Hey, uh, Oh, this could use this, or this could use that. And I'll, you know, text this person and see if maybe they can throw me something. So it was a little more thought out than normal. When I look at when I again I look at the credits in in the album, and I look at what you play and all the different instruments, uh, vocals, guitars, mandola, bazooki, bagpipe, piano, harmonium, uh, et cetera, et cetera, a garden shears, and I love that. The do you cons would you consider yourself? It's kind of a weird question. A natural musician, and again I say that with respect. Certainly, people practice. Certainly, mm -hmm. do, do you kind of feel that it's yeah, I, I go ahead. yeah, I would say that with you know, without feeling like I was being too uppity, but like I, I'm a natural musician. Musician, I don't read. All three of my kids can read music. They, you know, but I, um, I just listen. And uh, there was a story when I was ten, and my mother took me to piano lessons, and we found a lady in the neighborhood, and she taught. You know, she'd get out some music and teach me the fingering and notations and stuff. And after the first year of like picking up the notations, she said to my mom, um, "I I don't think you should give. I I don't I don't want to continue with him because he's not he's not reading. He's not learning. He's watching my hands and he's imitating me." And so years later, now we realize that this is the way a lot of musicians learn um, and the way a lot of musicians are who they are. But in those days, it was so rote. It's like, you know, I want you to read this. I want you to read yeah. this. I want you to yeah, yeah, this. yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, I can tell you that, you know, even this, in this band and in any band I've been in, I'm the guy that just listens and memorizes it and plays it. That's natural. Yeah. I would consider, you know, I remember, um, you know, teenager picking up the guitar and playing the guitar. And there was, I'm terrible, yeah. by the way. I'm like the worst musician ever. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not being self-deprecating, being honest. The, uh, I, I knew one a friend of mine that was just like, I mean, he could listen to a riff on a Stone song or whatever and just pick up the guitar. And I, I don't know whether he read music or not, but you could tell the difference with, mm. with, you know, everybody wanted to play guitar back then. P people still want. But you can tell when you when I go to see a cover band. Um, a lot of my friends play in cover bands, and you know when I when I'm anywhere and there's a cover band that comes on, like, uh, it, uh, my, you can ask my wife; she'll tell you I'm just obnoxious to be with. I have to just keep my mouth I, shut because oh. if somebody's <laughs> playing, if somebody's playing a song, and I know every nuance of that vocal i know if it's double tracked i know what the harmony is of these songs and if somebody doesn't do it with the right amount of soul i just get like oh. you know <laughs> when somebody so there's a whole art to cover to cover me to play in other people's music is like do it exactly like it is or do it the way you're going to do it but don't try to imitate the record and not get it because i'll walk away <laughs> it'll drive me crazy it would be, actually, I think it would be fun. I'm sure it makes your wife crazy, but I, I think it would be fun to be there with you and get your commentary. <laughs> I would like to, you know, kind of hook up a little earpiece for you to, oh, this is, uh, that's wrong. That's <laughs> I know. I was here in a band and they did a Beatles song the other night and they're friends of mine. And it just, they, I could tell how hard they worked. And then the singer did one thing that just didn't have any soul, like the recording. And I just was like, ah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I realized, you know, this is all beating myself up. Like I realized this, this is just me just driving myself crazy. Like just let him go. No one else hears this, you know?
Let it go. Yeah, let it go. That's great. But it 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 bothers you. It bothers your what do I want to say? Musical sensibilities, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just like an artist. It's just like a the carpenter. Anybody that sees somebody else doing something that's not exactly like the way they would do it, you know. And then, yeah, and then you, you and you, you know better, <laughs> and you right. want to present, you want to present it like you do with barley juice again. The new album, I love it. Barley juice, of course, I love it. The old speakeasy, and I, I love the 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 uh, the cover. I, lo I love actually everything about it. the songs are wonderful. The one thing I really really love about barley juice, there are are there's music that I can listen to the first time and like get right in the groove with it. And that's barley juice. It, I, I, now I listening to it again and again, of course I'll pick up more and more that, that I like and, and, you know, it kind of becomes part of the soundtrack of my life. That's not always the case. And that's not a criticism on other music because I like to, if somebody, especially if somebody recommends it, I want to give it more than one chance. I don't want to put on ten, five minutes and it's like, nah, not for me. Mm. Like I say, especially if it's somebody that I know that says you really got to listen to this. Yours right away. I'm I'm like jamming with it. I'm I don't mm. want to say dancing. Nobody wants to see me dance, but I'm dancing with it. It's well, thank you. The man. lyrics are amazing. Thank you. That's thank cool. you. Thank you. You're I think the there are I think there are artists out there. You know, for everybody that, uh, you know, I can bring up certain artists to my wife, and she'll be like, "Ugh, no," and. Uh, and I know that if you were stuck on a desert island and you had to listen to this and you memorized it, I have the albums that, you know, from when I was a kid that like one of my friends was into. So I would listen to that over and over again and didn't like it the first time. But once yeah. you memorize it, then it's a whole, it's a whole different animal. But to hear something that you like the first time, that's cool. You know, that's a cool and that's thing. I I agree, and that's barley juice for me. That's absolutely. And again, I'm not I'm not Celtic. I'm not Scottish. I'm not Irish. I'm far from that. It's it's interesting because there's something about that when I hear barley juice, it just you know. Oh, thank, just, you, it's, thank you. And I, again, I love the new album. I've got to talk about a couple of the songs, and yeah. on the new album. And again, barleyjuice.com. We've got links up barleyjuice.com. Available as uh, streaming. T tell us about availability for the album, etc. But I'm sorry. Tell oh, us about the availability. Yeah, where can? Oh yeah, you can go to barleyjuice.com and you can pretty much you can you can purchase a physical copy or you can stream any track or the whole album. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got it all set up there. And if I, we don't, you better write to me and tell me. You, know, you you've got it. You've got it all set up. Barley juice. We've got the links up, of course. WFMJ.com, uh, mm -hmm. uh dot com, Louisfreeshow.com, et cetera, et cetera. But just go to barleyjuice.com. That's barleyjuice.com. The one, and I was just listening to it uh, when I was setting up just before we started. Uh, it takes a village to raise a drunk. Yeah. yeah what can tell tell us about the song? That well. That's the longest song on the record. And then I think it probably took the longest amount of time to finish because I had been bouncing this idea around in my head for a long time. And I had that line, it takes a village to raise a drunk. And then somebody on Facebook, this is no lie, somebody on Facebook who I cannot find and I've searched because I don't like stealing people's stuff. Some woman came back. I, I just put it in there as a quote. It takes a village to raise a drunk. I think Hillary Clinton was making it takes a village like a big deal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It takes right? a village, yeah. So I was like, okay, like let me do a little parody of this. It takes a village to raise a drunk. And then somebody wrote underneath of it, out of the gutter and back in his bunk. And I was like, wow. Who is, and by the time I got around to writing it, I couldn't find that person who had wrote that second line. So I didn't, I'm not responsible for that second line, but it made it a song and it made it into a thing where I was like, okay, this is when we all gather around that, that poor person who, you know, really needs to be taken care of because they can't take care of themselves. And I started associating with so many of the famous Irish poets, you know, who were drunks, who were real serious drunks. And and just would create these amazing things. And of course, we had other things, 
other people too, uh, not just the Irish, but uh, but it just gave me that idea that like, like you know, everybody sits around and, and reveres uh, somebody who can come up with a perfect line. And um, many times, uh, a lot it, there's always an argument as far as like you know with the artist like are we encouraging this artist to you know destroy oh, themselves oh i see yeah yeah you no know, so so we see it's it's, it's kind of like based on that and you know you have to the whole village has to raise him up to to uh, allow him to create but also allow him to become whatever he's going to become he should it's, in, it's interesting you say that because keep because Makes me it just made me think back of uh, of many many decades ago. You know, being at a bar or something, and seeing people kind of, especially the younger guys, feeding drinks to an older guy that was obviously struggling, have difficulties, and then trying to intervene so they don't get him too. It, it just you know, sad mm -hmm. sometimes there, and then trying to get. Uh, God, I just remembered an incident trying to get some help for to for the guy and get these mm -hmm. guys off because it got a little tense because it was trying to yeah. stop because it was obviously this guy was ill affected by all the drinks they were buying for him it's it's sad you don't know what to try to get together and do that but it's a it's a really touching song i i love it and the music is of course great thanks thanks yeah. man yeah, yeah i kind of want to just take you on a little journey there got a little got a little away from me no it's, it's i uh, actually keith i appreciate you know hearing the background is um what do you want to call it it's, it's it's a pleasure to hear some of it because you hear a song and you don't really know you can hear the words and interpret it i was just talking with someone the other day i said you know before the internet and everything if you didn't get the words with the album you didn't know. And it was funny looking oh, back man. at all the songs that I thought mm -hmm. they were saying this, but they, mm -hmm. <laughs> they weren't. But that's well, when, my, when yeah. my kids started, when my kids started playing, uh, uh, you know, they were young teens and, and the, you know, they, they were in school of rock, which started here in Philadelphia originally. And, um, and some of the shows, whoever was singing lead would be standing there with their phone in front of them, like with the lyrics. And it's of course like, oh, you know, real wow. musicians, oh, we just can't handle that. Real musicians be like, put the phone down. What's the matter with you? You know, yeah. but that was their way of, but the funny thing was when it came to, they were learning classic rock and they would, and they would sing some of these songs. And, and I'd realized that like, <laughs> I didn't know that I didn't have the words right for, years they were reading them right and i was like oh is that what they're saying, That's what they're saying. What? <laughs> I, 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 strange so brew strange brew by cream i yeah. was like strange brew i was like girl what's inside of you no they're <laughs> saying kill what's inside of you and i had to learn that from my kid on the phone and i was like oh that ruins the song for me man yeah, yeah. i so sometimes I, it was better that we we got can, our own meanings. I can relate exactly because I, I some of it's like I, I don't mean this egocentrically, but it's like I like my lyrics better for the song. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. I want it to be the way I feel it, not right. is, I say that respectfully to to people that write the songs, but you know, yeah. back then you didn't you didn't know. You heard the word like you say about strange brew. You know, that's and then you find out <laughs> decades later. It's like, nah, so I'll stick with so mine. <laughs> oh, what was the other one that the other one that blew my mind was um oh white rabbit. And they learned white rabbit and they worked out this really cool rock version of white rabbit, Lou. You would like it, uh, because you're into rabbits. Oh, <laughs> you know it, you know it. Where's all my but, um, my rabbit, rabbit? But white rabbit, and I can't remember the where oh, and the and the red queens off with her head i th i thought there's oh sloppy dead i was like what's sloppy dead that's not what i thought yeah. they were saying at all but it was really funny just They're, learning wait a minute version. they don't she says off with the head right in the song uh, there you are yeah she yes she does say my right, in the song. off with her head but they were in 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 once somebody sloppy dead and i'm like that's not what i thought that's that not was. yeah so they did a version they do a uh 
like an updated version of White Rabbit? Yeah, my kids were in a band called uh, um, Dirty Purple for a while. They put out two albums. And do, you have a, do you have a copy? I mean, do you have a the song? Yeah. I would love to hear. I've got especially White Rabbit. I'll send you some stuff. Um, they Please. didn't. They, I don't think this is on one of their albums, but they had recorded it, and I found it the other day. I was like, wow. Um, but they used to take these songs that they were taught in School of Rock, and they just rock them up and make them. Their oh, own. I love that. Well, Keeper, what is it like with your kids um, being musicians? What's how how is that for you? I had you know what's funny. You're asking me some very poignant questions here, Louis. Because <laughs> uh, just Thank recently, for that I, I hope they're not too wacky and off no, off course. <laughs> no, no, it's good because they're all in their twenties now, and of course they've been playing music since they were. Uh, I've been throwing them in front of microphones since they were, you know, in, in elementary school. And what I finally had to do now that they're all in their twenties is I finally had to let go of the dream because they were all really good at something, you know, they were all just really, you know, so Scotland's a really good singer. She's an amazing singer. She's people have been asking her to sing the national anthem since she was 12. And, you know, she, and now she's doing this and she's teaching and she should be, out there on stage i had to let go and go this is their life so that's what it's like for me it's like just letting go letting them use music in the way that they want to use it and not in the way that you know ever since i was 10 all i wanted to do was be famous and you know and and you know really make a mark and they don't use music like that that said, my youngest uh, daughter is my drummer for the last three years. I so. love that. <laughs> that said, that was great. Barleyjuice.com, barleyjuice.com. The old speakeasy, and I love how you have the old speakeasy and then then return later on the new album, The Old Speakeasy. Mm -hmm. the, the Old Speakeasy, tell me about it. The Old Speakeasy was a place that I uh, visualized in my mind as the as the as the um your respite you're the beginning like in the old days uh in uk when everybody went to the public house and you know uh they'd all go down to the pub and they'd all share their stories and everybody knew everybody else in the village well the old speakeasy was that place maybe it was a little dark and damp maybe it was a little you know maybe there was some uh things that went on there that weren't supposed to see the light of day but the point was that people went in there to share and enjoy life and they got to dance and and they got to sing and um the way the album starts with um sick of being sickened i'm tired of being tired that's kind of like very very dark but it meant like i was i was setting it up for like i just want to go back to the old speakeasy where where the pores are stiff and the girls are bright and teasy and you know it, everything's the way I remember it. And I don't have to watch the news that's on today and yeah. deal with the world yeah. as it is. And, and which is, a, a it takes you to that time that a lot of younger people don't with the news. We won't get, it just, it's, it's difficult for people. And, really? you know, I, I just, I read a, a study recently, Keith Brewer, about how urging people not to watch so much news and how, and it's affecting mental health, uh, et cetera. And just, it's, and, and again, I'm not being political, regardless. No, of, not I at all. Touch, yeah, and I find myself doing the same thing sometimes. Okay, this is CNN. What about Fox? What about Newsmax? What about MSNBC? Let me check the BBC. You can really get caught in a downward spiral. Well, they have a job to do. They have a job to do. They have to, the job is to catch your eye and catch your yeah. ear. Yeah. Get your attention. And in order to do that, there's a lot of sensationalism. And, yeah. um, you know, you can flip from channel to channel and they might give different spins on the same story. Yeah. But the whole point is they're all trying to suck you in. Yeah. And once you realize that, it, it uh, you start to realize that you really just have to digest the fact. And that's it. That's why I love NPR. Yeah, I'm with you. I, and uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I just, and, and the other problem becomes with some, and, and I've said this many times on the show, all of them, I'm talking about CNN, MSNBC, Fox, Newsmax, BBC, whatever, if it's a story that interests me, or I'm curious about, 
I tr I've got to source it down and I can get a bit obsessive yeah. because I just want to make sure that I'm not hearing spin. I, I want right. a story, not this. I can spin myself later. I don't need the, the, the spin. And that's, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess just, what was it? Uh, just the facts, ma'am. Um, Dragnet, Joe Friday. Well, yeah, yeah. The facts, ma'am. Joe, Joe Friday. <laughs> I'm talking with Barley Juice. Uh, Keith Brewer, the new album, wonderful album, amazing album. Again, is Old Speakeasy, uh, Apple, uh, Spotify, et cetera. Just go to barleyjuice.com for more information. Keith, how do you, you talked about, about editing and how do you, walk how do you know when it's done when you say okay that's it it's ready tell me about that never done you just have to stop <laughs> there's an old quote that um that i used to uh, it was cut out and pasted on a door in, in the last house i lived in and it was something that say tell something me. like, like so, I can't. I wish I could remember it right now because you asked such interesting questions. But it, thank you. But it was basically like just that, like an artist will never say his work is done. If it, if the birds were like that, you'd never hear a damn sound outside. It was. Well, it, I love that. Right, because the if birds all like wanted to perfect their song, like an artist does, they'd never sing any. Um. So you really, it's just a matter of of taking it away from yourself if somebody else doesn't <laughs> first, <laughs> like a record company, um, and just saying, this is done, man. You know, like, That's go it. mix it, master it, put it out. Uh, nobody's going to hear it like you. Yeah. Because you hear all the things that are in your head. I read Peter Town Pete Townsend's uh, autobiography a few years back, and you know, he was one of those guys that used to hear orchestration behind everything. And of course, then he developed that, you know, the whole rock opera concept. But he would hear songs with full band behind them when he thought of them in his head. And I kind of identified with that. Once you hear it like that, if you can't produce it, you become very frustrated, like a Brian Wilson or something. Like you've got to create that or else let it go. So you just have that to walk away. You have to. You got to walk away. Else. Yeah, and some of them are, you know, and, and you feel bad because, like, some of them are turds. Like, you know, the the every artist puts out rec puts out records with songs that are they never want to play live. You know, there's one really? one or two here that's like been maybe buried in the record and in, in the in the album um, that they don't want to. Do you have ones that you don't want to play live? Um, I won't ask which one. Uh, just as, no, uh, I love all. <laughs> I, I mean, when you say I that, kinda, I didn't even think of. Well, I, I mean, I think you. I think what I do now is more of a a business thing where I feel the audience. Uh, I mean, I have some very tender ballads that I'm very proud of, and and people have used for wedding songs and things like that. But I won't put them in this set because these people got drinks in their hands and they want to rock. You know, so it becomes that kind of thing where it's not that I never want to do particular songs. I find one album in particular, one of my solo albums, very difficult to um, listen to now because I was going through a divorce. Um, you know, oh. there's that kind of stuff. There's a beautiful song that Tom Petty wrote called Room at the Top. I don't believe really you ever heard it. I got a room at the top of the world tonight. And a beautiful, beautiful song. And I think it was, um, uh, what's Goldie Hawn's daughter? I can't remember her name. The actress. Oh, I, <laughs> off the you know who I'm talking that. about, right? She was she, uh, she was on tour with the Black Crows. She was married to Chris. I can't think of her name right now. But anyway, she said to Tom every night, she said, I'd go to Tom, would you please play Room at the Top tonight? And he won't do it live. He would never do it live because it reminded him of a really hard, hard heartache. Kate, Kate Hudson. Okay. Kate Hudson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Let's. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but yeah, she said that story, and I said I get it. Yeah, but, but, but yet, and yet, and yet, uh, I've performed that song, and it's just oh, gorgeous. So, 
That's interesting when you said that about the one when you're going through a divorce that you it's hard to. Yeah, there's one album that I have five, uh, four. See here again. <laughs> solo albums. I have about my fourth my fourth solo album. I was going through a divorce, and the songs on it are just really they're they're very edgy, um, and they make me cry. Some of them, and uh, you know, I it's just very hard for me to uh, to listen to it. I'm proud of it, and I hope that other people get out of it what I put into it. You know, but um but yeah it's difficult i i love that you said that keith brewer about crying that makes you cry because um i've had this this ongoing discussions with with people and you know men don't cry da, 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 and, it's, 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 yeah. and i do and the older i get the more quick to tears the easier it is yeah, and yeah. I learned when i was yeah the more i try to push it down I, the way i always say it keith is it's kind of like having a wet sponge and squeezing it to mm -hmm. keep the water in. The more I try to push down, the more it comes out. <laughs> you, know, it, you, know, it, you know, it's funny, Louie, because um, we grew up in a time when it was very, very common to hear, oh, don't cry. Don't cry. There are, yeah. there are songs called Don't Cry. Well, that's the worst, the worst thing, thing to tell somebody. Don't cry. Yeah. That's that's a very selfish thing to tell someone. Don't cry because you make yeah. me feel bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, excuse me. Excuse me. Don't cry. Yeah. You feel bad. Cry and I'll be here. Yeah. I'll be yeah. here with I'll you. Be here cry. With you. Yeah. And that generation, I mean, you know, um, and I've talked about this. My dad, tumultuous relationship, miss him, loved him, certainly. But, oh, you cry like a baby. You cry like a little girl. You cry like a, you know. So, you know, it's like, and that's supposed to make me, what, feel better or stop? You know, and that generation was difficult with men and tears and mm -hmm. that's i'm that's why i love you saying it keith brewer about mm -hmm. makes cry because you feel you're in touch with your emotion oh absolutely yeah absolutely oh i love talking with you barlegius.com another 10 quote for another 10 minutes or so oh, i should okay. ask you on there okay good <laughs> the old speakeasy the new album again keith brewer.com you were saying you're preparing a tour a uk tour um yeah barley juice has done three of them and uh over the years and we we always took a group of people you know we'd sell it and take a group of people and, and just make new friends and just it's wonderful there's people out there that i know from all over the country that we've gone to ireland together and that's all we know of each other but i'm their biggest fan now you know so this one, because of COVID, we, we, I had started this idea. Let's try to do something different. Everybody always wants to go to Ireland when you're following an Irish band. Let me try to do UK. This is where my, my ancestors came from. My relatives came from London, near London. And uh, let's go back to like Eel Pie Island, where Pink Floyd and the Rolling Stones and Rod Stewart and all those guys used to jam um let's go back to charing cross let's go back to london all over the place let's go back to let's go see abbey road studios where so many of them recorded things that we don't hear about all we hear about is the beatles but abbey road has been, been around since the 40s and then let's go up to liverpool let's take the train that really cool train that goes up to liverpool two hours on a train and then then let's let's play the cavern club so i put it together with a friend of mine and uh barley juice did play the cavern club a couple years ago but uh i'm gonna do it again this time more as an acoustic act we're doing that in october and it's a whole different um it's kind of a whole different thing i mean i'm i'm offering it to my barley juice fans but i'm also offering to a wider audience because it, it's not really so barley juice uh focused you know that sounds and you go th this fall yeah we're going october it's october 6th through the 14th it's actually it's on my facebook page if anybody is interested in what i'm saying not, right not at com. i'm looking uh at no it's gonna be there i haven't put it there I, was, I, good. I, I mean i'm not saying good it's not there 
I th- I'm thinking, how the how the heck did I miss that? <laughs> it's it's hard. Well, because Keef.com will take you to the same place. You know, KYF. We should specify that my name is spelled KYF. And if you go to Keith Brewer uh, Facebook page, you'll see it. It's probably one of the first things there. And um, it's just going to be a really cool tour. I can't wait. Oh, that sounds great. Unfortunately, it had to wait three years to happen. But and it's happening prices, now. And all the prices went up, but you know it's happening. Well, yeah, of everything, of everything. That that that's for sure. What are you hearing about? Again, I'm reading some wonderful things about the old speakies. What are you hearing? I'm hearing, I'm just happy to hear that people are digging it. You know, I mean, it took, uh, it, it took years, uh, it, it, which is, I think, the, the biggest thing that makes it so unique to me is that it took probably, I would say, a good three years to hear accolades. You know, you know people would come up, up to the to the booth and say, you know, what do you got new? And, oh, this is our new one. Here it is, but then you don't see them or you don't hear them unless they report in online. But now I'm hearing people like you that like certain things. It's like it's very rewarding. I love. I see it on your Facebook page, and I'm gonna. I'll get that posted up. That sounds wonderful. There's the uh, the link. Okay, I shouldn't be talking about that while I'm doing the interview. <laughs> Yet I am. Yet I am. We Brewer, KYF Brewer. And barley juice, boy, that sounds like a blast for the uh, sixth through the fourteenth. Wow, wow! It's that, gonna, it's jam packed. It really is. Oh, that sound, that sounds absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So I, uh, okay, I've got to stop looking at it. I've got to stop looking at it, focusing. <laughs> like, you know, my focus goes. My focus goes. <laughs> and having the oh, I've got to ask you, uh, Mary Queen of Scotch. Yeah, I love it. Tell us. Um, I wanted a fast one on there. I wanted a punker and I kind of really wanted it to, you know, sort of, um, who were the guys, the Boston, the guy, the Boston guys, the, uh, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to combine some music and I wanted to really give you something, you know, energetic and a little frenetic and, and, and take you back to the days of maybe madness or uh, yeah, madness oh god those, yeah those guys and 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 so uh i created this thing in my head that just you know that theme that went sh- boom bum, 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 ba, dun, dun, la, da, da, dun, dun, and i heard horns and i called up my daughter remy and i said i know you played trumpet in school can you play this on the record <laughs> So they came over and they played uh, the the horn on there, and they're in the in the video. That's that's my daughter Remy, who is also our drummer, um, in the video uh, of Mary Queen of Scotch. Um, but I just I, my my wife loves that song too because she 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 remembers that you know when she was going to work. I said I need to make a I need to make something energetic. I need to create something, and I had this idea about the play on words, Mary Queen of Scots, Mary Queen of Scotch. It would be yeah, like this, yeah. this, this old gal that hangs out in the bar and she can drink you under the table. And so, and by the time my wife came home from work, I had the whole thing. So it was just- Wow, it just flowed. It just- Yeah. For you? That was an easy one. It flows. Easy for you. Wow. I mean, you just create. I, I'm serious. I, it's, uh, by the time she got home, I had to die. That's so it blows my mind. <laughs> well, she's. I've heard her tell this story a hundred times. How did she say it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I, take appreciate, I appreciate the modesty, but the music and, and what you do in our world is, is fantastic. I'd love to get your wife on sometime to talk about you. <laughs> oh, she would. She would, would love she, to be well, on together, here. To I would, yeah, let's. Uh, well, she's gonna, she's gonna watch it. Yeah, we'll communicate that with you. I love talking with you. I appreciate, and you're so warm and so open. And I just, I, I'm grateful for the relationship. Most grateful. Oh, I don't want to compare the two. I'm grateful for the relationship, but the music that you gift our world with, Keep Brewers, just blows my mind. I love the new album. I love that you're taking that people can go on that that trip. I see the itinerary. I 
not going to focus on it now, but I'm going to get more information up and out about that. That just sounds like how many people will it be total? Um, it's different for... every time. I mean, it's usually some, somewhere around 40. Wow, that'd um, be any more than that, you got to get two coaches and yeah, 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 lose, yeah. Lose, lose, yeah. You don't get yeah. a chance to right. spend time with each, with everybody. But um, you know, it'd be nice to be somewhere between twenty and forty. We'll see, we'll see who's interested and who. We already got some signups, obviously, but we'll see what what happens. That'll be great. That'll be great. I love, love, mm -hmm. love the new album, the old Speakeasy, and Barley Juice, and Keith KYF. See, I'm so used to. I'm glad you mentioned that. KYF, uh, we've got the links up at KYF Brewer and just barleyjuice.com. You can home base from barleyjuice.com and more. I, I'm so grateful. And thank you for the thing, nice things that you said. Uh, thank, hey, uh, Louis, this is a mutual relationship. Like I really respect what you do too, man. You know that. Thank you so much. It means, especially now, it means the world to me. So let's let's do it again soon. Check with your wife, see if- Let's cry. Let's both cry. I, I get serious. I, seriously, I get, I'm going to say I, I found some of the, the, the benefits of crying. I, I connected with a professor in- uh, You could do a whole and, show on the benefits of crying. You just say things that make each other cry. Well, you know, it's, it's it touches pe and people are, are open to that. And I'm, I'm grateful that you're, I'm going to use a term, some people, I'm going to get pushed back, man enough, that you're human enough to come forward and say that. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and come forward and say that you're an amazing human. I'm grateful for the relationship and love the music. I'm going to play some now and let's do it again soon, Keith. All right, brother. Thanks, Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. And and I'm going to get the pictures posted. The dogs, people are emailing me. I want to say hi to Jack around the corner at the shop around the corner. Thanks, man. Thanks, Keith. I, I just, I, I love doing the gig with him. He is just absolutely a wonderful, 